Let's continue. So the next step is to write our answer data class, which is going to hold data about answers. So I'm going to double click that to open it in my script editor. I'm going to be using MonoDevelop and I'm going to pull up my notes here and let's maximize this and make the type bigger. Okay. So we're going to be creating a series of small classes that are not mono behaviors. They're going to be pure C sharp classes and they are going to use the system dot serializable attribute. The reason that we're adding this is so that we can edit them and display their values using the inspector in the unity editor. So these are not going to have any functions. So we're going to delete start and update. And this class is just going to hold two variables. The first is going to be a public string called answer text. And that is going to be the string text of the answer, whether it's yes, no, on the moon, etc. Then we're going to have a public Boolean called is correct. And this is going to hold whether or not this answer is correct for its question. So that's all that we're going to have in that class. So we're going to save it, jump back over to Unity, and we're going to create our next class, which is going to be a question data class. So we're going to choose create C sharp script, and we're going to call this question data. Open it for editing. Again, it's not going to be a mono behavior. It's not going to use start and update. It is going to be system dot serializable. In question data, we're going to have a public string for the question text, and we're going to have a public array of answer data called answers. So each question is going to hold a number of answers that are associated with, with it, right? And those are going to be stored in our answer data classes that we just created. And each round is going to have a series of questions. So the next class that we're going to create, returning to Unity, create C sharp class. This one is going to be called round data. And like question data and answer data, this is also going to be serializable. Not going to be a mono behavior, not going to use starter update. And this is going to hold four variables. The first is a string for the name of the round. The second is an integer for the time limit in seconds. So how many, how many seconds will our player have to complete the round? The third will be a public integer called points added for correct answer. And so this is going to be, if you get an answer right, how many points you get. Finally, we're going to have a public array of question data called questions. So each round is going to hold a number of questions. Each question holds a number of answers using these public array variables. Let's save that. And now we can return and fill in our data controller class, which is going to manage all of this data. So let's open that up. And this is going to be a mono behavior, right? Because it's attached to our data controller game object. And this is going to use Unity Engine dot scene management. So we're adding the name spec the namespace declaration using unity engine dot scene management so that we can load scenes. Then we're going to add a public array of round data called all round data. So later on, we could extend this game to include multiple rounds. At the moment, we just have a single round. Um, but we'll put it in there as an array so that we can expand it later on. Next, we are going to set this game object to don't destroy on load. So we're going to call the don't destroy on load function and pass in the game object that the script is attached to. What this means is 
Traditionally, when we load a new scene, every object in the previous scene that's being unloaded is destroyed. By setting this object to don't destroy on load, when we load new scenes, it will persist. And the way that gets visualized in the UI is it gets moved into a separate scene called don't destroy on load, which never gets unloaded. So in this case, we are going to set this to don't destroy on load, and then we're going to call scene manager dot load scene, and we're going to load our menu screen. Now, the main purpose of this data controller is going to be to supply the round data to the game controller when we get to that scene. So we're going to declare a public function which returns a round data object called get current round data. And in this case, we're just going to say return all round data zero. So in this case, we know we're only going to have data at index zero in our round data array. But if we wanted to extend this later on, we could pass in an int to say what, uh, what data we wanted to return, what round we were in, and so on. Okay. So this is all we need for this for now. Let's save it. Return to Unity, and now we, before we can load any of the scenes that we've created, we need to add them to our build settings. So let's go to File, Build Settings, and drag in first our persistent scene, right? So the persistent scene is going to be loaded when we launch the application, and then push us immediately into the menu screen. When the player plays multiple rounds of the game, they're always going to return to the menu screen. They're only ever going to be in the persistent scene the first time the application is loaded. That's going to load the data controller, and then the data controller is just going to persist in memory. Each time we return, it's not going to be destroyed, and it's just going to sit there and be available to the game controller and so on. So we're going to add the persistent scene, the menu screen, and then the game scene. Okay, so now those are available to be loaded and we can save our data controller, play, and let's see, did I miss something there? No, actually I think that worked. Oh, they just look the same, right? Let's make the uh, main camera black for the menu scene just so we can be clear that it's happening. So we start here, there's no camera, and it takes us into a black scene, right? So that's working correctly. It's immediately loading the menu screen, and now the data controller is sitting in this don't destroy on load scene, uh, which will not be destroyed. So that is working so far. So let me take a quick look at the chat, and let's see how everybody is doing.